Welcome to Roundtable 14, May 25th, 2017. Business Communities, the original 21st century vision business roundtable. A New York City, New York Gold Tours meetup, broadcasting independently 45 minutes a month about business relevancies from a meeting room at the Science, Industry, and Business Library of the, public, of the New York Public Library on Madison Avenue, New York City. Science, Industry, and Business Branch of the New York Public Library. Okay, so before I begin, I'll go through the books like I always do. Uh, topics. The World's Most Valuable Resource in The Economist. Oh, and it was data and the new rules of competition. And we'll talk a little bit about competition in our round table today. Popular mechanics, smart everything, smart cars, smart appliances, smart phones, smart homes. Is any of it actually making your life better? Science News Magazine, Lake Life, Climate Change Will Disrupt freshwater, ecology, and recreation. This old house, living history, coming home to a colonial era house. We'll be talking a little bit about colonial era. Working mother, fearless leaders, immigrant moms like Representative Pramila Jayapal are winning office around the country and want you to join them. Eco House, Practical Ideas for a Greener, Healthier Dwelling by Sergi Costa Duran. Emote, Thikoscopal Jingrum. Today's online communities. Hidden Cities, a memoir of urban exploration, Moses Gates. Stairway to Empire, Lockport, the Erie Canal and the Shaping of America by Patrick McGreevy. Blog Rules, a business guide to managing public but our policy, public relations, and legal issues by Nancy Flynn. Why Mars, NASA, and the politics of space exploration. If we ruin this planet, we're going to need the others. <laughs> Wired to Care, how companies prosper when they create widespread empathy. Dev Patnaknyuk. Rebuilding Empires, How Best Buy and Other Retailers Are Transforming and Competing in the Digital Age of Retailing, Thomas Lee. Engage, The Complete Guide for Brands and Businesses to Build, Cultivate, and Measure Success in the New Web, Brian Solis, forward by Ashton Kutcher. And lastly, Lin B. Sagalan, Power at Ground Zero, Politics, Money, and the Remaking of Lower Manhattan. And anyone who's been down there, it's quite a community. Okay. So thanks for dropping in. I'm host Loretta Jones, CEO of New York Gold Tours. Once we begin promoting these 21st century vision, um, social media and local events, they'll accommodate nine business leaders who RSVP on meetup.com to meet local to global here with me on to Periscope and the web. Come to one or come to all. I'll start each of three segments with talking points that I've written out into few minute segments. 
uh, of fresh new ideas, inviting experts or anyone concerning business uh, to join in then a 10 minute discussion follow each, following each section. Later, use video of the roundtable to structure talks in your own organizations. Free on Periscope, Skype, YouTube, Google+. Join the conversations on Facebook and Pinterest. Follow New York Gold Tours on Twitter and see Instagram for free cleansing visuals. So, definitions. Community. Group of people, entities, or businesses sharing common locale, interests, characteristics, or concerns, and in business sharing customer market or industry. First talking points. Let me lower my voice. I am in the library. I just got to remind myself. Okay, first talking points. Basis of community today. Did you know the Native Americans welcomed the first Europeans and their slaves to their lands, even trading the island of Manhattan without being aware of what property ownership meant to the Europeans, the natives not expecting to lose their land at all? They thought they were welcoming in new arrivals. When they became aware they were being pushed out, taken as slaves and aggrieved, battles ensued and they lost the lands they'd occupied for more than 10,000 years. The Indians, a name given them by Christopher Columbus and his crew who thought they'd discovered an island of the Indies near Japan or China when they came upon the Bahamas, is a name still used today, along with calling those islands they first reached the West Indies. Columbus established business booms, as they call it, with the new communities they were establishing, but things didn't go well for him personally. In his own life, he was shunned by the communities that sent him. And the Native Americans today, we all know, struggle to keep flickers of their communities alive, some faring better than others, while they seem to have found it best to isolate. I always wonder why to such an extent. I had a great grandfather who was American Indian who didn't get to pass much down to me except peacefulness, gracefulness maybe, and spirit. I always wonder why not even the food is around. There aren't any Native American restaurants here in my New York City where we've got seemingly, seemingly every kind of food imaginable, representing just about every community in the world. People would love the open fire cooking, I imagine. When helping my son with a school assignment years ago, I learned myself that teepees were only invented when Indians were on the run from those early settlers, improvised so they could pack up quickly and survive attack. Until then, they had limestone dwellings, a material we still build with today. Who knew, right? What it must have been for them to see their communities unfurl, but also to be resilient and try, some surviving and some thriving, although we all know the story of the Native Americans being almost completely obliterated. They're not alone. Apparently it happens. Spirituals tell it. Kumbaya, my lord, kumbaya. The slaves that suffered through, forming a community just while accomplishing their work, a community of workers. We forget that. At best, they, we, I'm proud to say since I'm half black, were able to withstand the suffering, overcome and survive through the ages. Here today, still progressing or songs of early America that I just loved singing every morning in elementary school, especially once my father was no longer in the home and the songs seemed to offer up compassion. There was a young child singing, I felt instantly part of a larger, strong community in the sense of overcoming. Though I always noticed myself singing a bit louder than the other kids in my class, their particular Land where my father died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. The tune of which is from God Save the Queen, 
the British national anthem, and older community rich to America's history. Early communities of America had struggles they shared and victories they won together. Whether on the plains or in the towns, wants and needs of daily life bond people together, communities of people who left Europe, communities of people who remained in their countries, communities of people trying to form new lives. Do you know of any immigrant stories in your family history that share sentiments from past communities? As the world grapples with questions of borders, limits, and tariffs, business flies more freely and quickly over the world than ever before. Building global communities that seem they won't be defied. What will happen if that growth is stunted by a halt in actual globalization and free movement of people around the globe, though? What will happen if growth of specially select entities shore up their own stocks of trade, livelihoods, markets, and interior strength while others are left out? Before we discuss that, two opposing viewpoint quotes about communities forming or immigration found on BrainyQuote.com. There should not be a question of legal or illegal immigration. People came and immigrated to this country from the time of the Indians. No one's illegal. They should just be able to come, by Linda Ronstadt. Every decision on, this is another quote now, an imposing, opposing viewpoint quote by Donald Trump. Every decision on trade, on taxes, on immigration, on foreign affairs will be made to benefit American families. We must protect our borders from the ravages of other countries making our products, stealing our companies, and destroying our jobs. Protection will lead to great prosperity and strength. Donald Trump. So now, 10 minutes to discuss business community's first talking points. Should they stay or should they go? <laughs> From the old rock band, The Clash. Okay, so uh, the video can be paused now. Uh, for those using it for later talks. And we can go live on Periscope. Well, President Trump says protection will lead to great prosperity and strength. But doesn't he mean isolation? In business and in politics, isn't it much better to be out there today, being active and invo involved in not just local issues, but global ones? It seems to me fear may drive us to a stance not unlike the Native Americans, which will hinder us rather than help. We can't help but want to keep out those who are different, but should we resist that? Deporting, rejecting individuals, families, businesses may not be the best answer. Are there any other opinions on that? Isolationism versus being involved and being active. And how can businesses be active? There's so much social uh, cause relevance today, almost all business is thinking about how they can be socially active. And um, so maybe it's really limitless in the ways that you can get involved. And welcome. Hello, somebody who just joins. I didn't get the name. But okay, we can go back to the second talking points now. Communities are more than where you are. Businesses doing, oh, and the video, welcome back. This communities are more than where you are. Businesses doing like business form their own community. If you're in the business of growing organic apples, you're part of the organic apple growers community. Businesses are being brought and sold, bought and sold so quickly today 
a big change in the way we do business, that isn't it too time to rethink how we look at competitors and see them not as competitors, but as peers? Then what happens? Does information and knowledge flow more freely, propelling the overall industry forward? Does the industry grow stronger and more self-assured? Do more communities form where otherwise independent organizations would flourish or falter on their own? In 2001, I was injured at work. In 2002, my landlord sold my home to a woman with a tobacco inheritance that was to donate the apartment building to the fire department so they could lower the rents and have young guys move in and volunteer to the department. They, the only comparable apartment I could find was in Connecticut, where they accepted my dog, cat, young son, um, and my erratic workers' comp payment nightmare, where sometimes the checks just wouldn't show up while we had to wait for a hearing to restore them. Paying everything back then in retroactive payments, where then I'd get caught up with my rent and bills. Feeling more than isolated, but loving Connecticut still. I learned firsthand the power of the internet. Soon I was making and selling hats online, shipping to Italy, the United Kingdom, Canada, my own New York where I was born and raised, etc. Not only did I feel connected, but I felt liberated from my injury as well. I was even selling online room design since I had background in visual merchandising. Even today, contacting a professional on the web, still an untapped market. I'm sure anyone would agree the web has changed the world forever and communities by, build, by business build fast. Do you have a before the web and after story? One way evident is the, is the spore-like business models where niche businesses have added diversity where there once was none. The ability to be individual is ripe terrain, sprouting new communities all over. What are some ways business builds communities around the world? Before we discuss that, a quote about richness and diverse communities found on BrainyQuote.com. We are a nation of communities, a brilliant diversity spread like stars, like a thousand points of light in a broad and peaceful sky. George H. W. Bush. So now 10 minutes to discuss business communities, second talking points, like a starry night sky. And the video can be paused. And now we can go live on Periscope for discussions. Hello, welcome. To see each community for the diverse nature it is, shining bright like stars in a night sky, is a beautiful metaphor. How nice to imagine the peacefulness of it all, while all still working toward greater goods, maybe. In my opinion, if George H.W. Bush can have such an inspiring opinion of communities by such a conservative, then all business can take example and try to see themselves as either adding to the spark of glimmer and shine or dimming what's bright. A positive contributor or a negative one? Is anyone else surprised that such a beautiful quote came from George H.W. Bush? I mean, I didn't know him personally, so I can't really say it like that, but I was surprised to see it there, especially about diversity. Anything to add? Okay. So we'll go on to the third talking points, and if the video will resume. Third talking points. Future realms in an imperfect world. Not to be Pollyanna, but I'm a positive optimist. 
I always loved a good view, and another one of the songs from when I was a young kid that provided a visual for me was, Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountains' majesties above the fruited plain. I have to keep my voice down. I'm in the library. America, America, God shed his grace on thee, and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Such a beautiful song about such a beautiful land for people and business to come to and for people and business to enjoy. For anyone in any other countries, think of yours and how you love yours. Lastly, if we take a lesson from the Native Americans who now isolate for generations long, we can look at the fact that for the most part, since they isolate, though who can blame them? The world isn't benefiting from their goods, services, or concepts, and they're not thriving from the worlds. Thanks to the web, there's some interaction, but not optimal. Isolation may not be best, while shoring up one's shores is at the same time important in today's real and undeniable danger of ill-intended people abound. However ill-intended, though, they might not hate us so much if we weren't over yonder invading their communities. Communities need respect. What makes them strong, what makes them thrive, needs to be respected, and we should not do to others what we wouldn't want done to ourselves. Same for business. In business, when we define our target market, we are lumping ourselves into a community. How will we participate? How will we have a negative or sorry, will we have a negative or positive effect on the overall community at large? Or will we aim to gobble up the playing field? We should proceed with caution, care, and optimism. If we see a bright future, we're more likely to have a good impact and go well about our business, building rather than destroying, supporting rather than defying, spreading social consciousness and security rather than insecurity, fear, and worrying about ourselves only. Maybe as you forge your company's vision statement, you've thought about it, about what kind of footprint you'd like to leave in your company's wake, for example, or your own values. How do your practices stack up against your values? What do you see as negative community participation for a business? What do you consider positive? Before we discuss that, two quotes about community security found on BrainyQuote.com. What we have to do is to find a way to celebrate our diversity and debate our differences without fracturing our communities by Hillary Clinton. And then from John F. Kennedy, when power leads man toward arrogance, poetry re reminds him of his limitations. When power now narrows the area of man's concern, poetry reminds him of the richness and diversity of existence. When power corrupts, poetry cleanses. Ten minutes to discuss business community's third talking points, positive business players versus negative business players. Okay, so the video can pause. And we can go live on Periscope, and I hope people will join in with the discussion. <laughs> so what happens when business can see its competitors as co-players on a playing field rather than as competitors? I think that would change everything. <laughs> As members of a distinct community, creating the tone and pace of an industry itself. 
What will it take, if not poetry, to remind ourselves what's important? Equity, equality, excellence. So should we wrap it up? I guess that's it for today. Unless anyone has anything to add. Give it a minute. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for joining. And please join again next month. It's the last Thursday of every month. Uh, and we'll see you again then. Take care. Well wishes and build great communities.